Hello and welcome to the latest episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. In this series, we select a new species each time and teach you how to draw that animal in fun and simple ways while sharing animal facts as we go. So let's get started and take a look at the animal that we're going to be drawing today. And today's a special episode. Happy Easter, everybody. Of course, being the Easter episode, we've selected the Easter Bunny as the animal that we're going to draw today. Now, if you live in our part of the world, which is Ohio, you'd likely do what we did and deduce that the Easter Bunny is most likely the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. So we've listed its common name here. Below that, you'll see that it's in parentheses here is what's called the scientific name. Scientific names, of course, are used by scientists, but also researchers and educators. And they're designed as of being a very specific way to talk about any given animal. And that's because it includes the two most specific forms of their classification. The genus, which is listed first here in, with a capital letter in that word. And then the second word here that's listed is its species, and that's always listed lowercase. So the genus species is the animal's scientific name, and again, very unique to that individual species. So below that, you'll see some type of a status. We've included this status, which comes from the IUCN's red list of threatened species. It helps you get an idea of how at risk this animal is for being endangered. And at least at the time of the recording of this video, the eastern cottontail is least concerned for extinction, so that's a good status to have. I'll pull this out of the way and show you that I'm ready to get started. I've got kind of what I need here, something to draw with and something to draw on. In this case, mine is a pencil and paper. Now you can always find a pencil around the house. I like one with an eraser because it gives you a little extra options for uh, forgiving your drawing if you make a mistake. And we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to teach you real quick this sort of dot to dot method that we'll use throughout the drawing. So when you do dot to dot, you know, connect one point to another. Straight lines, oftentimes I'll only use two dots, but our opening line is actually going to be a curved line. So in that case, I'm going to kind of draw three lines and show you what I'm doing here. So I've got two there and I'm going to put a third one in between to indicate this sort of curving shape that I'm going to make. So I'll just kind of go ahead and now connect these with curving lines and work my way back to this lower line. And that's going to be the back of the head. It's not going to look like too much at first, but basically that's our first line that we're starting with. Now we're going to start with the top dot here that we opened with, and we're going to put a dot right about here. And since we're doing a straight line, this is the time where we just need two dots and we'll connect those quite easily. Now, this is actually going to become the head. You may not see it yet, but we're going to add a subtle curving line up here. So I'm going to put my end dot right about here is where I'm going to end this line. And I'm going to kind of put this second dot out here to kind of indicate the curve that I want. And then again, it just kind of gives you something to aim at. You're curving this line. Now, I like to use a method called slow and steady where I basically sort of slowly scratch my way there or draw to get to the point going over lines as I'm doing it. Uh, another technique would be just to connect them pretty fast. Uh, think of it like the, the old fable, uh, the tortoise and the hare. Uh, in that case, slow and steady was uh, looked at as the best way to win, win a race. But as far as drawing goes, uh, it's really what's more comfortable to you. If you like the slow and steady rate, uh, slow and steady pace, do that one. If you like the faster pace, whatever is comfortable. There's no, both the hare and the tortoise would be great drawers either way. So choose what's comfortable. I'm using the slow and steady because I think it's easier early on and it's also better to show you the movements uh, uh, and give you a little more detail as I'm doing it. So we're gonna add the first anatomy piece here to this animal and that's gonna be the nose. The nose is quite small even though they have an excellent sense of smell and I'm just gonna do that with a U shape, just like that. Okay, so uh, as we've got the nose here, I'm gonna put in an eye as well. Uh, we're kind of like mammals, like the rabbit, so we identify with animals that have eyes and eyes are kind of how we start to see a face. So I'm just drawing a circle or oval, more oval maybe here. And I'm just kind of putting it right here about in the drawing. Now, once that eye's in place, I'm going to start to color it in, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of the portion of that white and that'll capture a nice highlight. So there we go, we've got a nice eye and nose. Um, you may not yet see the face, but it's starting to come together. Um, we're gonna add the mouth next and that's really where you're gonna to start to see a, a face appear. So to do that, I'm coming below the nose right about center, and I'm just drawing a straight line down to about where I've ended that other line there. Um, now we're going to make this nice smiley face. We like happy animals here at Peppermint Narwhal, so we're gonna make a happy animal, happy rabbit. So to do that, we're essentially starting now at the bottom of that line we've drawn, and we're just sort of basically drawing a nice curving sort of shape up here, almost like a half circle, kind of curving it up. So there we go, we've got a nice sort of smile, and we'll just put this extra little curve under flipping upside down U kind of curve, and that'll give us that nice dimply cheek sort of uh, pinch there on the smile. 
Now we're coming back to the other side of the uh, upper lip here, just a little bit still below the nose. And we're gonna sort of, we're mostly in profile, but we're kind of shifting to what's called a three quarter view where you can see a little bit of the other side of the face. So we're just gonna add this little curving shape right below the nose to indicate the other side of the lip there. So I've got that now in place and I'm ready to add the teeth. Uh, to extend the teeth, we're just gonna take this center line that splits the lip up there and just extend it down a little bit. And then we're gonna draw two other parallel lines to either side of that. And then once we've got these three lines, we're just gonna essentially connect them with a the curve. There we go. So there we go, we've got a nice little uh, front incisors on this. And when you look at these uh, sort of teeth, oftentimes when you see someone draw a rabbit, that's a, a key trait that you might see them capture the teeth. Oftentimes you might see that also with a squirrel or a rodent if they were drawn. And that's actually what scientists thought they were related to rodents and originally rabbits were kind of classified in the rodent order, but later they realized that they weren't rodents at all upon closer inspection and actually have been given their own equal order called Lagomorpho. And Lagomorpho is where you'll find things like rabbits, which we're drawing here today. And you'll also find it's closely re related uh, animal called hares. And hares are essentially um, kind of like a rabbit, except they're uh, typically have bigger ears even than the rabbit and longer limbs and they're a bit lankier. So rabbits, hares, and there's another kind of cousin that you throw in this family and that's called the pika. And the pika kind of looks like a, if you shrunk down a rabbit, almost like if you took a rabbit and crossed it with uh, a mouse, uh, you'd end up with the pika. They're found in kind of cold weather areas. So those are the three forms of the lagomorpho. We'll come back to the teeth and talk about them one more time here before we uh, move on with some of the facts. But we're gonna now draw what's probably looked at as the most iconic feature of your rabbit. And if I was to give you one guess on what anatomy piece stood out most on the rabbit, you'd probably say ears. So we're gonna draw those now. Big distinguished ears of the Eastern Cottontail. They're fairly large. They have an excellent sense of hearing and it's probably one of the senses that they use most. So I'm gonna put a point up here to get the height. And I'm gonna put another point out here for the curve. And again, now I've got three points. So I'm basically starting, this will be my origin. That's my end point. And I'm just kind of connecting my dots here and curving that line nicely. So there we go. We've got a top part of the, or the back side of the ear. Now we just need to repeat that movement on the opposite side. We're gonna start at this point now that we ended with. We'll put another one out here for the curve and then another one kind of closer down here to the other one on the top of the head. And then we're completing those to get the ear. I'm just gonna extend that down a little bit more into the actual head there. And then I'm gonna erase out that top line because I have my handy eraser. That way I can make it look like the ear kind of popped off this side of the head. Now we're going to put in the center portion of the ear really easily. We're just kind of mirroring that shape there. And that's gonna give us the inner ear sound. When you have a big ear, it captures more sound and it channels down that ear canal and helps the animal hear very well. So let's draw the second ear now. Uh, we're gonna put a point maybe right out here, do this one as a curving technique. And that way we'll kind of get this kind of a movement here. So I've got my three points. That's the highest end point. So I'm aiming at the portion of the curve and then curving back to the end point there. So that's gonna give me that uh, second ear. And this time we're going to kind of bring it back down in a curve. We'll put, we have our start point. We'll put another one there and then another one there and then just kind of seam those together in a soft little curve. And there we go, we've got a very rabbit-like face. Now that definitely gives us a rabbit. Remember again, I said we'd come back to the teeth. Certainly the teeth, and we know rabbits are now not part of the rodent family, but they certainly teeth look like rodents in some way. There's a little bit of differences when you really look closer, but and for first expression, they certainly look similar. And the reason that they're similar but not re related animals is something that's called convergent evolution. And what that essentially means is this is when two animals that aren't related develop very similar features, like in this case, the teeth that look like the rabbit and the squirrel, even though they're not closely related animals, they've adapted the same unique feature. So now that we're gonna make the body of this rabbit, we're gonna make a nice curving gesture here, fairly big, because uh, rabbits a lot of times are kind of hunkered down. They're fairly, wanna be fairly inconspicuous even as they're eating. So I'm gonna put a point here at the back of the ear, a point here at the top of the back, and we're gonna kind of sweep it down to maybe about here. So now I'm just kind of taking those dots and drawing that curving line technique and using my slow and steady pace. If you're drawing it a little faster, just watch my movement and then kind of repeat that. So that's gonna give us the back side of the rabbit. We're gonna put in the front side of the rabbit here. We'll just make a little diagonal line right here. 
uh, just off to get the front of the neck there. And then we're gonna put in, uh, we're gonna turn this into like a letter Y now that we've got that drawn line there. Doesn't that look like the letter Y right there? And this is gonna be the first four limb. We'll go ahead and mirror this sort of line that we just draw for the front side of the arm to get the back side of the arm. And that's gonna extend a little bit longer so that we can now put on a foot. Once we sort of draw a straight line out here, that'll give us the bottom of the foot. And again, if you wanna add a point here, we're gonna be aiming at this point, but we need a little bit of a curve here. So I'm just gonna kind of do it just like that to get that front foot. Now to draw some toes, it's super easy. They're like upside down J's or if you're drawing like little mini candy canes. There we go. And now I'm going to kind of mirror this to get the other forelimb that will have a slightly bit in, in the gesture here. So I'll just kind of mirror this diagonal shape that I had here. I'm going to put that curved shape there and then another little flat leg there. If you got room for a toe, put it in. If not, you don't really need to worry about that. But there we go. We've got two front legs nicely of our rabbit. We'll go ahead and uh, now draw the back leg. Now the back leg, we've got a lot of room because that actually back leg is much bigger than the front legs. So it's going to have sort of a, a big shape like this. So we're going to kind of make a diagonal starting here, maybe do about there. And we're just going to kind of connect the dots there. And that's going to be the front part of the back leg. Now we just need another line, just maybe about here. So we got two dots connect those and there we go we've got that nice front side of leg coming together now on the back side we'll end with we'll create a dot at the very end of our back side of our rabbit and we'll put a, another dot maybe right about there and we're just going to connect those with the straight line and then we're going to do a dot down here connect that with the straight line and we should end up with that type of a shape now to draw the legs it's quite long so we're going to actually put our point we're going to make a point here at the end and a point over here and we're going to draw a big long straight line to get this underside of the back leg because like i said very big back leg if you miss your dot a little bit no worries uh, that sometimes happens again you can either erase it or just uh, uh as long as you're close you're usually in the ballpark so okay now we've made this sort of uh, curving shape here for the front side of the leg we're going to repeat that same thing so wherever your line ended put a new dot there since my line ended there and i'm just going to kind of do that curving shape again for the what'll be the front of the back foot. Now, you're gonna take this end point here and this old end point there, just connect them with a straight line. And of course, we're all experts at drawing toes. So we'll just do those sort of cane shape, candy cane shapes or upside down J's. And there we've got a nice looking back foot. Now, I'll just add the stomach here, which is essentially kind of continuing from this line, but you know, it's covered up by this forelimb. So just draw a line kind of from the back of the forelimb to the top of the toe and you'll steam that all together nicely. Finally, I'm gonna put on one of the most distinguishing characteristics other than the ears. Uh, of course, this animal is called the cottontail. So when you think of a cottontail, think of like something pushy, boofy. I like to think maybe of a cloud too. You can't really get this wrong, but I'm just adding a couple little, little sweeping curves of a, like a cloud or if I was drawing the top of a tree. And there I go, I got my nice uh, sort of poofy tail. Now. Final feature that we're going to add is some whiskers. I have a friend, Shelly, that wouldn't be uh, very happy with me if I forgot the whiskers. So I'll put a couple, three little dots there on the face. And I'm basically going to, from those dots, I'm going to extend these lines. Now, most of the time I've gone that slow and steady route on the drawing. But for this part, I'm going to go a little quicker, a little faster. So I think sometimes that's the best way to draw whiskers is the rabbit way. And there we go. We've got some nice looking rabbit whiskers. So as you can see, we've completed the drawing of our Eastern Cottontail Rabbit or our rabbit, uh, Easter Rabbit or Easter Bunny. We'd love to see your drawing. I'm sure if you look at my drawing, yours might be slightly different. Uh, and if everybody was to compare all of our drawings together, you'd see slightly different parts of each of them. But that's one of the best parts about drawing. Everyone's individual. So share yours with us by using the hashtag MintySketch. And if you could also uh, post them online, uh, or if you have a suggestion, please feel free to give that to us as well. Again, we'd love to see them. For right now, please uh, join us back again on a future episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals. Happy Easter, everybody.